My name is Gordon Yellowman. My Cheyenne name is Ohiwayana, a member of the Cheyenne Rampo tribes. What I'm going to talk about today is I, I talk about the relationship that we had with the United States government. And when they encountered us, uh, Lewis and Clark uh, encountered the Cheyenne people on the, their core of discovery when they were coming west to uh, explore the country. Cheyennes were along the Missouri River. And when Lewis and Clark came, they presented us with peace medals, our Cheyenne chiefs, the leaders of our people. And this is an 1801 peace medal. It says peace and friendship, the gesture of the handshake, the peace pipe. That's what that represents. And so in 1801, Thomas Jefferson gave this to the Cheyenne chiefs. And I wear this with pride because these peace medals are handed down from generation to generation. And then the next one here, this one was, uh, 1881, and this was uh, another peace medal by the President of the United States, and that was uh, James A. Garfield. And so these were the oval shape. This one is more uh, descriptive in detail because it shows an image of a friendship, a white man and the Indian. So when we wear these peace medals, it represents leadership. It represents the stature of, of you as a person. A leader. And this one here is very uh, special to me. This was given in 1865 at the Treaty of the Little Arkansas. It was given to my great great grandfather. And so from there it went to Bears Lariat. And from Bears Lariat it went to my dad, Spotted Skunk. And then my dad, it came to me, Huehuayano. So this medal has been handed down from three, four generations. And so give, signing the peace treaty, 1865, and this is where that came from. And so we have these peace medals in our families, but when we show these, it represents the, I guess you want to say, our credentials as leaders. And so for me as a Cheyenne chief, it goes back to generations. And so we've always been chiefs, the Yellow Man family, the Cummet Sivas, as well as other Bears, Lariat, Yellow Hawk. Those names were all chief names. And so earlier on, as I mentioned, we encounter enemies. One of them was the British soldiers, redcoats. And so the British, when we saw their uh, coats they were wearing, they were red wool. And so as we captured those coats, we began to fashion our blankets. That's what this represents. This represents the red wool of those British soldiers. And so it was the inside of their coat. So we made our chief blankets out of those coats from the British enemy. Uh, the red is always worn on the right side, the Cheyenne chief, the right sho shoulder. And then to the left is the blue, represents the blue sky. It also represents warriors, uh, the, the warriors that fought our enemies. Uh, freedom, country, blue, um, blue sky people. That's what we kind of represent. And so when a chief dies in our community, we always turn the blanket opposite. We put the blanket on the left side because the red is next to our heart. We, we're, we're in pain because we lost a leader. We're mourning that leader. And out of respect, you'll see these blankets worn at funerals of a chief, and the, the red's going to be on this side. It's, it's just things that are common uh, knowledge and our protocols as chiefs. And so this, that blanket and the peace medal are very valuable things. And when we talk about leadership, we talk about the war bonnet. This is a war bonnet. It's made out of the tails of the golden eagle, the black and white. They're highly praised. And so the black and white feathers and your leadership as a chief, you have to earn each feather. You have to earn the right to wear it. So when I'm talking, I'll give you a reference. So when I went to uh, 
grade school, I earned a feather. When I got to junior high, I earned a feather. And when I got to high school, graduate, I earned a feather. And when I went to college, uh, Votech, I got my certificate, I earned a feather. And when you, when you go to college, you earn your degrees, you earn more feathers. So these are things, and even if you go into the uh, armed services, you earn a feather. So this whole headdress represents your accomplishment in life as a leader. That's who it is. You, uh, Viho, uh, Viho and Yellow, Hehewayano, Yellowhawk. That band represents Yellowhawk. And so the Golden Eagle is a very powerful symbol of, of, of our Cheyenne culture. And, and I had an image of a Golden Eagle. And then the Bald Eagle is a symbol of our great nation. So it's the bird, it's the only bird that flies high in the sky and he takes our prayers to the Creator, Mahayo. He's the only one that can get close to the Creator. So when we call him the Eagle, we ask him to take our prayers up. He does that. And so here's a fan that we use uh, in dancing today. Sometimes we, people will go dancing, uh, gourd dance or social dancing powwows. You'll see these feathers. And Cheyenne law was very strict. And the Cheyenne women were not allowed to touch these eagle feathers, especially the spotted ones. And, they, and the, if the Cheyenne girl touched these feathers, these speckled feathers, they break out in rash on their arms, their face. And we tell them, you touched a feather you weren't supposed to touch. So those are laws or rules that, that follow our culture. You must respect these birds. You must take care of them. And so uh, the eagle plumes that we have here, we use these plumes in ceremony. And see, these are the down feathers of the chest of the eagle. And so uh, as you earn this right to wear this, and then when you put it on, you're representing your people. But I also mentioned in previous stories, I kept talking about the horse. And this is the horse hair. He's also represented with us in leadership. So this is the horse hair. And then the rabbit, the rabbit fur is here. The rabbit is the one that, that took care of us in the winter time, but also in the summer, the spring. And so he's with us too, the rabbit. And a lot of times people don't understand why we decorate our headdresses, why we do things. And again, this, the red wool, British soldiers. And so here in the back, I have a dragonfly. You'll see a, you'll see a dragonfly that's uh, right in the center. And that represents speed, agility, because uh, it goes like this. It doesn't stay in one place. And when you encounter your enemy in battle, you were like this. He couldn't touch you. He couldn't shoot you. He couldn't kill you because you were like this. So that dragonfly is like a medicine. And so he's in there. And so as leaders, when we challenge with uh, challenges, we're swift to move. And they can never touch us. And those are symbols of our people. It's the dragonfly is a sacred symbol in our Cheyenne tradition. And so that's this one here. And the black and white, the, this comes from the tail of the golden eagle. And there's only 12 feathers in the tail. How do I know that? It's just common knowledge. When you start working with these animals, start working with these feathers, you're going to learn the numbers. And then rare occasions, there'll be 13. And if you find 13 in the tail set, that's an extra blessing. And so a lot of times we tend to just say, oh, that's beautiful. You need to know what that represents. You need to know the numbers. And then as we uh, went along, we, we traveled many places. We were able to trade our buffalo hides, trade our uh, eagle feathers, trade our uh, beadwork with other tribes. And this one came from the south. This is the macaw feather. 
and we use this in our peyote meetings, Native American church, because it's got beautiful colors. And when we take our sacred sacrament, that's what we see, mm -hmm. colors. And these colors come to life, these macaws, these macaw fans. See, it's different color in the back, orange, blue. And this is what we call the Native American church fan. It's used in the peyote meeting. And so when they seen the, the men that's running the meeting, they call them roadmen. They'll have these fans. And so this is just one of many. Now here's another one here that's a smaller one. Same thing, McCall feather. And these are Cheyenne designs and beadwork. All cut beads. Plains people, you see these. This was my daughter's when she was a princess. And so she was 12 years old when she became a princess for an organization. And so they made her a fan. And so those colors in here, and this is a fan handle that goes to this one. And that represents the veterans, the warriors. Because she was a princess for the Thomas Service Club, war mothers. And so she wore that fan with that flag on there because it represented veterans. And here's a dance staff. Um, I'm not quite finished with it, but my son made this for me um, just to show for educational purposes. Uh, when the man dance, he'll carry the staff and, it, and then he'll, he'll use it to dance with it. It's like a dance stick. Northern Plains people have horse sticks and Southern Plains, they have staffs. And what I'm, my, my goal is I'm gonna put an eagle head on the top and I have an eagle, golden eagle head that a friend gave me. And my goal is to put it on the top to, to have the eagle, his mouth open. And then that eagle is gonna represent our people. It's gonna represent the country, but represent freedom. Most of all, represent prayer to the Creator. And then when we use the eagle, we use all of his uh, parts as well, like the buffalo. We use the eagle wing for ceremony. We use the eagle bone for whistles and ceremony. And it's always the right eagle wing, the right eagle bone. And some of the young people that's going through ceremony, they'll say, how do I know it's the right one or left one? Again, as I mentioned, you need to learn the anatomy of those animals, the spirit of the animal. And <clears throat> here you see a decorative cut on top. That's just part of fashion. And that's what this is today. This is fashion, glitzy, sparkles, color, it's not traditional. Tradition is very plain like this. No glitter, just plain colors. Today you'll see in the dance arena all this glitter. Why? Because it's competition. And the judges will want to see that costume, that beat reflect, it catches their eye. And that's why they do these things today. They decorate their dresses with these flashy colors. It's not traditional. It's all about competition. And that's the power of the world. And sometimes uh, when they told me when you cut a feather, you're taking the spirit out of the animal because metal is not allowed to touch the animal. But we forget those rules. And so for me, the person that did this was decorative, wanted to be unique, noticed. But little did he know they were taking the spirit out of that bird. So those are very common rules, common practice of our people. And so what I showed you today is all about leadership, the culture of our people, the animals, the beauty of our people. And we're still here today. We will be here for many, many generations as long as we hang on to our culture, our ways of life. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed this opportunity. I want to say thank you and have a good day. I hope.